KPMG is delighted to be supporting Clare and the Transport Knowledge Hub at this event and also at other similar events at KPMG offices around Britain. For us it's about making public transport more attractive so it can attract new passengers, make the journeys better for existing passengers. The Hub is very much a forum for sharing best practice and for discussing key issues. So events like today provide a really useful opportunity to discuss some of the key issues that we face in the UK. If we increase the housing supply, we get more better affordability um, and with that increased welfare for all those people that have access to a home that wouldn't otherwise. Networking, meeting new people who are involved in the transport industry and transport planning. What we found from surveying the some, some hundred thousand trips that have, that have gone on is that 80% of users have shifted from modes other than bus and 50% have shifted from private use cars, be that owned cars or taxis. So ultimately when we do the maths on that we think that we've taken something like 48,000 trips off the road that would otherwise have been made in private vehicles. Transport is a means to end, isn't it? It's an enabler. And it's there, frankly, to get them from A to B. And people want the very best quality, affordable and available solution to get them from A to B. But they don't actually kind of genuinely want to focus too much on that bit in between. And got the trains at the moment is I, you know, my journey today, I built in two and a half hours to travel 35 miles because I wasn't sure whether I'd get there on time. And we need to overcome that by having a long-term plan. What we got together was a group of people who wouldn't normally be in the same room to have a frank and open discussion about the issues that they're facing, particularly around transport and housing need. And I think it was really interesting, the views that, that came across and the discussion and the debate um, was we actually started coming up with solutions on our way forward. We'd be a bit more creative in, in use of some of these funding pots sort of in and around housing uh, to get a bit more sort of action happening uh, in the near term. In an ideal world we would be able to plan the infrastructure and the investment that we want but actually we're constrained by existing development, uh, existing brownfield sites that need to be connected, not always with the best um, public transport connectivity that, uh, uh, that we would like. We, like many of the other people on the panel, have a really um, clear vision about wanting to build inclusive neighbourhoods, connecting people, um, making sure that our um, housing developments are people-centred, um, they're clean um, in terms of clean growth and they are of high quality. Very few places we saw where you had new stations being built and only one in Cambridge where there was a rapid transit scheme which connected to the new homes. Which quantum of objectively assessed need is there across all of the Pan region? And we estimated that about 500,000 new homes are needed over the next 10 years, which is about 10 to 15% uplift on what's currently uh, being delivered. I think it's great if we can look at transport planning as an enabler. The big question is how do we, it's been mentioned already, how do we get people away from their reliance on the car? Um, I think for me, um, the issue around long-term funding, um, so that we can properly plan um, both housing and transport together. Um, I think also having shared objectives around what our transport infrastructure is there to do, um, and so that when you know your different parties are coming together, we can kind of really maximise um, what it's there for. Mm -hmm.